Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. And today, thanks to you viewers, the patron, and mostly Gurgling Gore today, we have the newest EP from Sanctuarium into the Mephetic Abyss. Yo. Stay death, stay rotted. This is so good. Like, I've honestly been holding off on this review because I didn't know how to make this not sound like I'm kissing this band's ass. Because that's what it's going to sound like. And their debut was equally like, whoa, what is this? Like, I remember distinctly the tapes down there. I just don't want to cause a tape avalanche. Yeah, I know that sounds stupid, but when it happens, it's legit a bummer. It makes a massive mess. And I'm just looking right now. There's a couple tapes in here. I got kind of... Like, I've really been kind of fiending to listen to that Spawn of Satan cassette. And it's just like at the bottom of this tape pile. And I know if I pull it out, it's going to make a massive mess. But this came out like the first EP slash demo. It was Gurgling Gore, if I remember... And it came out along the same times, around the same time as Nuclear Remains Radioactive Decomposition. But they both are honestly good releases, but there's something about Sanctuarium, and especially on this release. Like, I was really, like, when I first looked at the side of the J card and saw the how long the songs were, I was like, oh, like legit, like, hell yeah, there's nothing under eight minutes. The shortest two tracks, which is awesome that both of these songs are exactly the same time, eight minutes and 19 seconds, nine minutes and 26 seconds, and 9 minutes and 14 seconds, but then decom decomposing the puslescent void is another 8 minutes and 19 seconds, so yeah, I accidentally said that twice, I know. Four tracks of just legit, when it comes to like, doomy death metal. I was very surprised they went this route and made it not sound just like, oh, it's another band that wishes they were born in the 90s in Finland. No. Not at all, honestly. Like, of course, we all kind of wish we had that chance. But at the same time, Especially being a duo, it's just like, okay, so this is their LP. This is a full length. I kind of just put that together. I was like, they wouldn't just do four eight plus minute tracks. But when they get into the Doomy territory, they kind of go like, it's Finnish, and yeah, it's been done before, but they just do it fantastically. For example, here's what it, like, gives me vibes of. And I apologize. It's, this isn't where it should be. I just, I'm not even going to bother. Ah, uh, come on, Eric. Sorry, just 
but obviously abhorrence. And the self-titled 7-inch EP and vulgar necrolantry. I mean, I feel like it's almost impossible not to be influenced by abhorrence. It's just something that you're eventually, if you're playing death doom metal, like call it in a vortex, like you're gonna eventually, literally, get caught in a vortex and be like, oh shit, that riff sounds very similar to, you know, uh, Holy Laws of Pain, for example, or like The Power of Souls, Pleasures of Future Flesh. But like, if you're a fan of Abhorrence, you're gonna love this. I mean, it's not as murky as Abhorrence, because this is a vibe, and it was just magically captured. It's something like, because as much as I like the new Abhorrence EP, it just, there's something about those classic Finnish demos that like, same with Convulse. Same with Demigod. Like, I, I'm actually, like, bummed the Demigod reissue does not come with the demos. The Demi Lich demo compilation I listened to more than Nespet. And I'm not just trying to be that guy. Like, oh, I only listen to the demos. No, like, seriously. These are some of the best death metal demos ever. Like, there's a reason... Now, for a while, like, I don't know why, it felt kind of hard to honestly, like, even get a copy of, like, SPET in, like, before 2017, when Ever Extremely Rotten did the tape reissue, which kind of opened the floodgates. Although I ordered gold, Svart sent, sent the red, I don't care, it happens, but I always wanted the gold one, because I just knew it would look so sick with the cover art. I'm sorry, I'm totally off subject, but not really, because these doomed out synth passages, this is my shit. Again, this is like going up against depleted... Because I heard this first. This is a lot more death metal. This is straight up funeral doom. And it's great. Real quick, I wanted to show you the tape cosmetics before the tracks switched. Because as always, Gurgling Gore delivered the goods. And I honestly was... I wasn't sure if this was an EP... Or full length. Because sometimes bands just, you know, they'll put out just like a long EP. But I, I should have just put that together, like, you know, but I didn't. And honestly, that's because I have been listening to uh, Wretched Decay by Depleted, which is also four tracks, but. Um, yeah, it is also double-sided. I, I was going to say, this is pretty massive as well. But in its own style. Because again, straight up funeral doom now. They started more as like death doom. Depleted are now killing it in the funerary doom circuit. When it comes to the death doom circuit, yeah. We got the spectral voice when the gun split, and I love it. I listen to it constantly. I just saw everything over here just fall over. Luckily, I grabbed this, but 
just for an example, like, there's a little spectral voice in here, but not really, because spectral voice is really, like, cold sounding at times, where this, like, has that, like, profanatica, like, warmness to it. Like, especially in its death metal. Like, is that straight up death metal? And it rules. Like, this is like such a perfect mix of death and doom metal. Like, I saw that, uh, again, if I pull it out, it will cause a table lanch. Oh. It did not, but congratulations to Gurgling Gore veterans, the, the great, for getting a vinyl release for Whispered Morbidity, which I'm going to listen to in a little bit. And I really don't know who did the Sanctuarium vinyl, but I want a copy because this is awesome. Black Sea Productions, I guess, maybe? Because this was recorded at this was recorded by Necrohelm at rehearsal room. Rotted death doom coming from the Mephetic Abyss. Yeah, this is incredible stuff. Seriously, one of the best gargling gore bands yet. Like Troll Cave was is really really good. The Grave, really, really good. Sanctum, really, really good. But, like, this is, like, really, like, just some shit, like, on, like, a really high level of gnarliness. Like, if I wasn't using the Evoken box set, as a tripod right now. I was going to say, there's parts on here that even tap into the little funerary aspects of Doom Metal, and it works! It's not boring! It They go, like, the evocative rap. It starts death metal, and then gets into the funeral territory. It works its way there. That's how we did it in Skeleton Proof Tanks. It was all a build-up to the funeral doom part. Like, that we knew we had at the, in the, well, technically, it was at the end of the song, meaning the last 12 minutes. Because live, there was, there was one show we played where we just did the Funeral Doom song for 25 minutes. Like, and went straight into the Funeral Doom part. We skipped the whole death metal part. We just were, we were like, hey, like... Like, our drummers, like, he, he had to get, he ended up needing surgery eventually, but, like, his elbow was, like, really messed up, and, like, he legit, like, couldn't, like, last at the speed he needed to. So, this was our way around this problem. Because, like, we kind of knew, like, hey, man, are you going to be okay? And he kept telling us, like, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And then, like, the night before, we're at band practice, and he is, like, falling behind, and, like, he's fucking up. And I'm like, yo, 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 stop, 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 stop. I was like, yo, man, you, you can't, you, you can't do this. Like, we, we need a plan B. And he was like, dude, I got this. I'm like, no. Like, I'm not, no. 
Like, it, it was, like, kind of a big show, too. Like, we were playing with, it might have been Electro Quarter Staff. And they're like an instrumental Gorguts from Canada. They played Maryland Death Fest the day before. So, to me, it was kind of a big deal. And now we have to just play a Funeral Doom song. Like, I was kind of, as much as I love that Funeral Doom part, making it just its own song. I mean, playing with this, like, over-the-top technical... Just not like ch check them out, Electro Quarter Staff. They're ridiculous. They're just like instrumental gore guts, legit. They're so insane with their instruments, and they're probably one of the loudest bands I've ever seen. But we played a show with them in Philly, like right up the street from the church, too. Like, I remember, like, the church was like right around the corner, and we were like playing some bar basement. But, like, I have a tour shirt and everything. Like, I just always was proud of that show. But having to play that Funeral Doom song instead of our full set was definitely a bummer. It was like when we had to open for Vital Remains the first time and our new bassist couldn't play. So we had to teach our old lineup who were like, oh, we'll play. Like, you know, like, if it's just a one, one-off one show, like, yeah, we'll play. Because, like, we were getting into playing, like, every night of the week, and those guys couldn't do it. Like, they were, like, very smart in school. Like, they were 18, I was 19, and, like, they were still, like, they had to finish, like, senior year in high school. And, like, you can't be out. I mean, you can, but, like, this one, like, the one, our one guitar player wanted to get into, like, an Ivy League school. And I think he did. But, uh, so, like, it got to the point where he was like, yo, like, me and, it was Steve and Raffy. They both couldn't do it anymore because it got too big. We had no idea. We, th we legit figured, ah, we'll do, like, three shows and that will be it. We had no idea it was going to become a thing. And, like, we, we'd be playing, like, New Hampshire and opening for bands like Skinless, Napalm Death. And, like I was saying, you know, Electro Quarter Staff was one that just sticked out to me. Just because we had to just not stick to our normal set and play just a Funeral Dooms track. And now... Here's where I really, really, really like what uh, Sanctuarium do with Into the Mephetic Abyss. And that is keeping the death metal death metal. Like, the death metal never drifts into anything that's, like, boof. It's all just killer. I love this release so much. And I can't wait to try and get this on vinyl. I mean, for one, the cover art is fantastic. The riffing, oh my goodness. Look at these demons. This is so good. Like... Come on! Sanctuarium into the Mephetic Abyss. Learn it. Know it. Live it. Again, if you're a fan of early Spectral Voice, you're gonna love this. I would even say newer Spectral Voice, you're gonna love this. Boost the Ceremonia. You're gonna love this. But also, you like the grave, cyanide, this rules. This is some poser crushing death doom metal and I am 
grateful that Gurgling Gore sent this to the channel. Seriously, and this is such a gnarly step up from the demo. And I love the demo. I'm sorry, I really don't want to call us the tape avalanche, but I really want to take it out. But anyways, Gurgling Gore, Sanctuarium, into the Mephetic Abyss. This is some grade A top shelf modern death doom metal. And this is one of the few bands when I say death doom metal, death comes first. The death metal. Like, it should just funerary death metal. There you go. I made up, a, I'm sure that subgenre already exists, but that's what Sanctuarium did here with Into the Mephetic Abyss, and I feel very ignorant for not realizing it was a full length. I went into it kind of just thinking it was an EP, and now I just, like, I'm kicking myself in the ass, like, how could you have been so just stupid? Say, like, how did you not realize that was an EP? Like, like, how did you not real? And then I remember, oh yeah, you were listening to a ton of Depleted lately because, I again, a four-track album that's just absolutely incredible. But I knew Failing was like a full length because they just. I, I have gotten kind of everything, I think almost at once from Depleted. I think they sent me Wretched Decay first, and then the Honest single, and then Failing on Transylvanian Recordings. Now this is more traditional Death Doom Metal. Like, early Peaceville... You know, at times, I would say, until they go into total funeral doom territory. But on Wretched Decay, it's a little more, you know, your usual suspects, but they still add their own vibe to it, and that's what I love about Depleted. And what I love a lot about Sanctuarium is everything on Into the Mephetic Abyss. And real quick, I just wanted to make sure all instruments by Necrohelm, lead vocals and lyrics by Carlos. Now, I do wish there were lyrics printed because, see, I, this has to be getting a vinyl release and now I'm like very interested in getting the vinyl release. I don't know why I didn't read the J card a little bit better. But you get rotting remnants decaying among the carcasses, mephetic abyss, and decomposing the pulescent void. Like I said, this is more death metal than doom. It just happens to be doomy death metal that is legitimately rotting and disgusting. Sounds like it's legit from like Kill Town. Like the Dead Void demo. That that that's a good example. But it's a full length and it fucking rules. Like again, I was saying, legit, this is to me what I consider a poser disposer. Sanctuarium into the Mephetic Abyss. When it comes to modern death metal, especially with modern death doom. It's very easy to just fall into this, like, trap of, oh, shit, that riff's been done before. Fuck. This, like I said, there's certain parts where obviously it's like, ah, that sounds like abhorrent. Who gives a fuck? At the, at the end of the day, Sanctuarium, to me, have their own sound because nobody else in... Well, again, I'm not sure 
we, where they're from, but I'll put it this way. Stateside, there's not that many bands when it comes to death doom metal that legit go in the way Sanctuarium did on Into the Mephetic Abyss. A lot of bands would be like, oh, I don't know, like, but, like, Hales, like, same with, like, Sybaris, like, Hales for, like, just doing your thing, and I really like that, and I think that's kind of another thing that Sanctuarium, if I had to compare them to anyone, and I'm, again, this is just my brain, but Sybaris comes to mind. I just from like having the death metal come before the doom. It, it's just a really awesome choice that a lot of bands don't use. A lot of bands will normally like have a funeral part, keep it real slow, and then like build up into like a death metal part, do a quick death metal part. When I say quick, I mean like maybe three minutes of death metal back into the funeral doom song and like that's your kind of blueprint where this goes disgusting death metal first or disgusting rotting doom first into some more gloomy like funerary territory into some straight up death metal back into some funeral shit and then leveling off with just more death metal. It's awesome. Every track's different. And every track is just fucking fire. Sanctuarium, Into the Mephetic Abyss. One of my favorite full lengths of the year so far. Because yes, it is a full length. And I apologize. Congratulations, Sanctuarium. Into the Mephetic Abyss, thank you again to BDG, everybody that made it this far. Make sure you are good on the patron, and hails.